author face journey and we are on week four our final week of discussion based on Stephen Furtick's bestseller, Crash the Chatterbox. And if you are new to this, if you're just watching this series for the first time, then I encourage you to go back and watch uh, the introduction, week one, two, and three before you come here so you can be caught up. And if you've liked this series, then I encourage you to like, comment, and share it with your friends. So we're wrapping it all up and I'm really excited. I'm, I'm so glad first off that I'm, I'm finished because this in and of itself, honestly, was me crashing the chatterbox in my own head doing these videos. Um, I didn't want to. I had everything telling me why I shouldn't and it just now i had then i started getting everything telling me you know why i haven't done it yet so this has been a journey for me i hope it's been a journey for you and i know that i am proud just to regardless of how it ends up whatever the results are i am just glad that i gave god my yes and i hope and pray that in this discussion that you have also been empowered to give God your yes. So I am going to be reading um, out of First Kings um, chapter 13, 14 to 21. That's going to be our basis today. Um, so stay with me because this is a pretty lengthy you know, passage. And Elisha said to him, take a bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows. Then he said to the king of Israel, put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it. And Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, open the east window. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. And he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For you must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, strike the ground. So he struck three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. This week, our final week, we're going to talk about disappointment and discouragement. Last week, we discussed the possibility of our what ifs becoming a reality. We talked about how the enemy has, since, since we were children, the enemy has built a solid case to justify our fears. But God has also built a solid case to justify our faith. And we have to bow to one or the other. We're either going to bow in fear of the enemy or we're going to bow to faith in the Lord. One of the two. And in these moments of our what ifs becoming a reality, in these moments of thinking and, and, and obsessing with our what ifs, we actually can experience a deep discouragement because of our disappointment. Now, disappointment is the gap between what I expect and what I experience. Disappointment leads to discouragement and we're not alone in our in feeling discouraged. Uh, think of a person that you admire. Uh, who do you want to emulate? They have experienced disappointment and discouragement. Everyone. I know someone I love is uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes. He has experienced disappointment and discouragement. And that's comforting to know so that I know that even though I experience disappointment and discouragement, I still can keep moving forward. Just because I feel there's no hope doesn't mean there isn't any hope. Just like what is becoming a, becoming a reality, um, we are not immune to discouragement. Um, but God's grace does empower us to keep pressing in spite of how we may feel. 
in this journey, in our journey of faith, we are going to experience discouragement because of disappointment. Um, I think some things that I think of is like not as many people liked the video as much as I wanted, right? Not many people looked at it or, or you know, nobody bought my book or, you know, I took a leap of faith and now I'm not seeing the returns. I mean, these things, they may happen. And if we wallow in these disappointments, then we will become discouraged and we will give up. So how do we combat disappointments and discouragement? How do we handle them? Well, when you're trying and trying something, when you're pounding and pounding the ground, but seemingly, seemingly nothing is happening, people tend to do one or two things. They either ignore the disappointment altogether, act like you're not disappointed, really you're suppressing your feelings, it's gonna end up coming out eventually, right? Or they end up lowering their expectations to the level of their experience. Well, okay, I didn't get a thousand views. I'll probably only get like five. I'm, only, I'm not even gonna take this seriously. I'm just gonna do whatever because I'm probably gonna get five views anyway. Probably like to my mom or something like that, right? But can I offer another option instead of ignoring disappointment or lowering your expectations? I actually pre present the option of accepting disappointment. <laughs> Confess the truth. Confess that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called. Nothing is wasted. There's absolutely nothing that you've done. There's no time, no energy, no battle that you fought in your mind. None of that will be wasted. It's okay to feel disappointed. It's okay because we know the truth. All things work together for my good, right? It'll all come to fruition, maybe at different points in your life. But when we plant, we can't always expect a harvest the next day, but we don't give up. Like Elijah telling the king, strike the ground. Don't strike a couple of times. Don't strike once and then be like, all right, I'm done. No, 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 don't, don't do that. Don't only overcome the voice of the enemy once or twice and then stop like, oh, I'm tired, I'm done. No, keep fighting, keep pounding, keep overcoming. One of my driving principles is simple. I reap what I sow. If I sow sparingly, I will reap sparingly. If I sow bountifully, I will reap bountifully. And the church tends to use this when we're speaking of finances, but I actually apply it to every part of my life. I apply this principle to every endeavor I, I undertake. When I first started trying to lose weight and I worked out hard for a week, I didn't lose a pound on the scale. And I was disappointed and I accepted the fact that I was disappointed, but I wasn't discouraged by the number that I saw on the scale, I told myself, if I keep exercising, I will see changes in my body, okay? I worked out for a month, took a picture, looked at them side by side, and I could see a little progress, but it still wasn't as much as I wanted. I was disappointed, but not discouraged. I kept telling myself, if I keep exercising, if I keep sewing into my body, I will see changes. Maybe I need to change how I'm doing this. I started eating better. I started thinking in other ways. After two months, I saw significant changes and I was encouraged to keep moving forward. It's okay to be disappointed, but we can't allow disappointment to discourage us. When we're discouraged, it's hard for us to rethink our strategy. Our creative juices stop flowing. It's difficult to find other ways to achieve our goals. It becomes challenging to stay on the journey when we are discouraged. So how do we keep dis disappointment from turning into discouragement? Gratitude. And you may ask, Okay, how are these two things even related? Discouragement and gratitude, not really seeing it. Well, here's the thing. Gratitude 
reminds us of what has already happened. It reminds us of the right perspective. When we go to God in prayer, he expects us to begin with thanksgiving. Have you ever wondered why? Gratitude actually does two things in prayer. One, it acknowledges and thanks God for what has been done. Thank you, God, for providing last week. Thank you, Lord, for protecting me from that almost accident yesterday. Two, it puts us in the right mindset. God is my provider. God is my protector. We, I already know this. I am coming to the Lord with thanksgiving. I'm coming to him acknowledging what he's already done, the blessings he's already bestowed upon me. And I'm coming with the foundation that he is my provider. He is my protector. Back in the day when my money was looking funny um, and I didn't know how I was gonna make it through the week, I would be filled with worry and I would approach God in desperation like, Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna need you to help me, okay? <laughs> and God gave me grace in those moments and he'd come through, right? And as I grew spiritually, he required more of me. And so when my money would start looking a little funny, the Lord would tell me, uh -uh, you stop crying and let's start with Thanksgiving. That's how God talked to me. So I would say, Lord, please help me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And it turned into, Lord, I thank you back in the day when you came through. You've done it before and I know you will do it again. You are my provider. You are the source of my supply. I was still in need, but my attitude, my perspective was completely different. Okay, I may have been desperate, but I wasn't hopeless. Discouragement displaces hope. So when I'm disappointed and I think my weight still isn't where I want it to be, or you know, I thought I'd be further in my weight loss journey, I know now not to leave my disappointment unresolved. I resolve it with gratitude. Gratitude says, thank you, Lord, for providing my subscription to Beachbody and having the time to exercise and the money to buy healthy food. Gratitude gives me hope because it allows me to have a realistic perspective of my future by having the right mindset concerning my past. So when you are disappointed, as we go through this faith journey together and you begin to step out in faith in spite of the chatterbox, just remember to resolve your disappointment with gratitude and I guarantee you will come out victorious every single time. I hope you enjoyed our discussion based on Stephen Furtick's bestseller, Crash the Chatterbox. I look forward to hearing about your faith journey and how you're overcoming your chatterbox. Uh, if you like this series, I ask that you like, comment, or share this video or this series with someone that you think will benefit from them. Visit my website at mariahfaithjourney.com to read my posts, be part of discussion, check out our online store, and most importantly, be encouraged. Faith is a journey and I'm so glad that we're in it together.